Hello. Special thanks to Ona Saber for sponsoring our 90,000 subscriber lightsaber giveaway. It's closing in fast. All the details are down below. Our story begins the night after Anakin's nightmares. He and Padme had a talk in the late evening, and he was able to sleep for the rest of the night relatively soundly. In the morning, he sat in the living room. Padme was getting herself ready in the other room, and Anakin was trying to think of a Jedi he could get in contact with or talk to about his visions. Obi-Wan was here on Coruscant, and so was Master Yoda, but there was a genuine fear of dismissal. Anakin wanted to go to Yoda, but the relationship could be rocky from time to time. It's not that Yoda wanted Anakin to fail, or anything of the sort. More or less, it was that he didn't understand what Anakin was trying to say. Skywalker knew it, and he didn't see it as Yoda's fault, per se, and is exactly why he was hesitant about approaching Master Yoda. The issue with Yoda for Anakin was his age. Yoda spent 800 years interacting with the Jedi who never displayed as much emotion as Anakin Skywalker. For Yoda, it might be difficult to remember what it was like when he lost the first person he cared about in the Jedi sense of the word. Yoda had trained thousands of Jedi over the last 800 years of his life. Maybe not as his actual students, but he had taught them in basic instruction and taken them to Ilum. He watched them all grow up and die before his very own eyes. Any being that had seen so much life and death would at one point or another become cold to it. That wasn't necessarily Yoda's fault, and he didn't want to blame him for it. On the other hand was his master, Obi-Wan Kenobi. This was a weird situation. Maybe not the same as it was with Yoda, but there was definitely an uncertainty here too. Obi-Wan hadn't expressed any knowledge of the relationship directly, but through subtle offhand comments, Anakin kind of figured Obi-Wan knew. Thing is, for Anakin, that despite those offhand comments being friendly in their demeanor, for Anakin, they put more pressure on him. For Skywalker, he toiled between whether or not Obi-Wan was actually playing with him or he was threatening him. Of course, the latter was probably not true, but he couldn't help but feel pressure from the playfulness that Obi-Wan was admitting. Anakin thought about the council members, and while maybe Windu or Shock 2 would be interesting cases, he decided against going to them as well. Mace would probably be similar to Yoda. Not that he wouldn't try to help, but he would, and just to help in the best way a Jedi could. Shock T was a legitimate choice, and maybe she would be of help to him, but Anakin just wasn't sure. He was stuck between two potential choices, Shock T and Plo Koon. Shock T had this very maternal aura, and she could calm your anxious heart by just being in the room with you. Plo Koon mirrored that, but in a paternal way. While Anakin could call Obi-Wan his father figure, and even a number of times did, they were closer to brothers than they were actual father and son. The few times Anakin went to Plo for help, he gave guidance that was necessary and actually helped him a lot in hindsight. The moment that came to mind the most was the time Ahsoka was lost on the Trandoshan moon. Plo Koon may have seemed distant in the moment, but he was in all actuality trusting of Anakin's training for Ahsoka. It wasn't that he didn't care for her, it was that he believed that she'd be fine on her own because he had that much faith in Skywalker's training of her. Anakin thought back on that moment and figured that perhaps it'd be a good idea to reach out to Plo. Padme gave her love to Anakin and left for the Republic Executive Building. He smiled and watched her leave before he got out his hologram communicator and tried to contact Master Plo. To his dismay, Plo Koon was unable to answer, so Anakin left a message for the Jedi Master and told him that he would like to speak to him whenever he had a moment to talk. Anakin also put himself down in a way when he left this message, telling Plo that he didn't want to interrupt and it was probably not that big of a deal anyways. The message was sent and Anakin went to the Jedi Temple. On Kedah Nemodia, Plo Koon was in the middle of an intense standoff with the Separatist. Months prior, when Ahsoka was still in the Order, she and Anakin began the first leg of the assault on the planet. They never came back to finish it. Instead, the Wolf Pack was brought back to Kedah Nemodia, and the 501st was sent to Ring of Vinda to assist in another battlefront. Plo Koon was leading the fighter assault with Commander Wolf on the ground leading the city battle. It was a split invasion, but with the war closing in towards a conclusion, this was the final bit of the Separatist resistance left in the Core Worlds. Plo Koon was also the closest Jedi Master from the High Council to Coruscant, who wasn't already on the planet. Plo's fighter spun around, and he noticed that he got a communication from Coruscant. He didn't know who it was from, so he instantaneously assumed it was important. At the moment, he figured that it was a location of General Grievous being revealed, so while it might be important, it was out of his hands. The Council wouldn't send him to fight with the droid general. That task would likely fall onto either Skywalker, Kenobi, or Fisto. The irony is, the Council hadn't yet learned about Grievous, he was just simply making an assumption. His fighter sped forwards, and the bombers behind him rallied up and locked their S-foils into attack position. Plo flew below a bridge, and the bombers followed him. They rolled up from under the bridge and blasted the underbelly of the Separatist capital ship. On the other side of the Providence, a number of vulture droids jumped down and chased the clone pilots in their ARC-170s. Luckily, they had rear cannons, but Plo wanted to cover them. The Separatist flagship was disabled, and it began being dragged down by gravity. 
the Republic fleet in the area didn't want to engage the ship because it was so close to the Cadenimonium bridges. If they hit the ship with the fleet, then the chances are they could completely wipe out a bridge and kill thousands. The bombing run dropped the ship from where it was. There was no way for itself to propel itself forward. The vessel was already limping away, so it didn't really take much to disable it even more. Plo cut the engines on his ship and he felt the gravity suck him and the ship towards the ground, but the vulture droids passed by him and he pressed the ignition switch on the engines and launched himself forward. His blasters fired away and clicked the vulture droids. Jag and the other clones thanked their Jedi General as he covered them. He didn't say anything. This was very normal for them. They always had each other's backs. Plo launched his speeder forward and sped towards the combat area and contacted Wolf to see how things were going on the ground. They were meeting stiff resistance simply due to the street combat and the nature of it. Fighting in the city streets was never easy, but they couldn't use heavy tanks or mortars because it could destroy civilians and the bridge itself, which they didn't want to happen again. Plo asked if he needed to divert anything their way, and Wolf said that they were doing fine. They didn't need anything at the moment. He told him and the fighter squads that he was returning to the flagship to take a message. Plo pulled off and their squad continued the assault. When he eventually got to the flagship, he landed and opened up the hologram he received from Coruscant inside of his starship. He listened to the message Anakin sent him. It seemed as if the message had been rehearsed. Anakin was on edge, which Plo found a bit unnerving. This was before Anakin was told by Palpatine that he'd be put onto the High Council, so Plo wondered if the war was actually getting to Anakin or not. Plo tried to contact young Skywalker, but his communication ran silent, so he left Skywalker a message and told him that after the Council debriefing in the coming hours, he would contact him again, and he might be able to give him an answer. Plo gave the specific course on time the session would likely come to an end, and left a bit of encouragement for young Skywalker. The irony is that Anakin at the moment was learning about his appointment to the High Council, and so, in his excitement, he completely missed the message sent to him by Plo Koon. What made it even more ironic is Plo was going into the Council meeting and learning that Anakin was appointed to the Council, of course, not at the rank of Master. There was no means to which Skywalker could legitimately become a Master, which for Plo meant that he assumed Anakin would be coming in with a lot more baggage when they talked after the session. Not to mention that Yoda was being sent to Kashyyyk, to assist the Wookiees and Obi-Wan was set to inform Anakin about his secret mission. Plo knew that whatever was bothering Anakin beforehand would likely be only increased, doubled, tripled, or even quadrupled. When the session ended and Anakin received his mission statement, he was very clearly upset, but he realized he had a notification on his communicator from Plo Koon that for whatever reason came before the session in the chambers. Plo knew he couldn't call Anakin immediately after the session, and so he just waited for Skywalker to call him back. Luckily, the campaign on Kaden Amodia was calming down for the moment, and the Separatists had one last holdout. The war was almost finished inside the core. Once it was done and over, they could wrap it up with Grievous and the Separatist Council and win. After Anakin talked with Obi-Wan, he went to his room and cooled off for a little, before trying to reach out to Master Plo Koon. When his contact was sent out to the Jedi Master, he answered it quickly and waited for Anakin to speak. Anakin gave a quick hello, and then kind of stopped. There was an awkward silence sitting between the two of them. Was Plo behind the decision to keep Anakin from becoming a master, or to send him to spy on the Chancellor? He was on the Council, could he be trusted? Plo could see the thoughts running through Anakin's mind, and he decided that he would speak up. He asked Anakin on his thoughts regarding the mission mandated by the Council. Plo knew that Anakin's emotions would sit at the forefront of his mind, and if he could get Anakin to relinquish those thoughts, then perhaps he could answer the question Skywalker had been waiting for him to answer. Anakin was very quick to tell Plo how it was ridiculous that the Council would put him into a place to commit high treason against the Republic. Plo suggested that perhaps it wasn't treasonous. Anakin was very surprised that Plo actually stood on the side of the Council on this matter, but of course he didn't. His job as a Council member was to care for the Jedi Order as a whole. It meant that he had to make decisions based on what he believed was best for the Jedi Order itself. Anakin then asked if Plo was suggesting the Chancellor was the Sith Lord, or if he was a bad man at all. Plo told Anakin that he never said those words. The truth being that the Council being so tightly interweaved with the Republic didn't believe Palpatine was willing to forego his power once the war came to an end. Plo asked if Anakin would support a dictatorship over the current system. Anakin shook his head, but he countered asking why they thought Palpatine was a dictator. He again said that no one believed he was a dictator. No one said that. They didn't want him to become one. And aside from a number of odd things he'd done over the years, especially during the Clone Wars, something was clearly out of place. Anakin got frustrated and then he stopped. He said to Plo that he didn't understand why the Council put him up to the task. Master Plo told Anakin that they believed he was the only one who could do it. Anakin asked what he meant, and Plo strategically filled Anakin's ego without filling it too much. He told Anakin that the Council believed he was the only one fit to do it, and none of them would be able to maneuver the field as well as he could. It was a genuine compliment, but it was strategic as a compliment. He was making a point to Anakin that not everything was as black and white as it seemed to him. Anakin asked Plo why he wasn't given the rank of Master. Plo just told him that he had to prove himself as trustworthy to the Council. 
Regardless of Palpatine's situation or not, the Council, for the most part, did not trust him. It didn't mean they didn't have faith in him, because they did, they just didn't trust him. It's because he could be brash or relatively uncharacteristic for a Jedi. He didn't like to listen to orders and he could break them whenever without giving a hint of it happening beforehand. The Council wasn't trying to control him, but they needed to trust him. Anakin asked if this mission was meant to be his trial, and Plo sat there silently. He expressed that there was nothing he could say to reject, nor accept the possibility of that being the truth. Anakin then realized that the Council was doing this to see how loyal to the Jedi he was, rather than his loyalty to the Senate or more specifically Palpatine. Upon such a realization, he also acknowledged that if he was quiet, he could simply do the investigation, prove that Palpatine wasn't a Sith, and get the rank of Master. The worst part is he could have figured this all out if he spent more than two seconds thinking about it. Plo could see the demeanor change in Anakin's mind, so he gave him a second and then asked Anakin about the question he wanted to ask him. Anakin snapped back into the moment and then remembered the entire reason he and Plo were here to talk to begin with. Anakin said that he was having nightmares or visions, one or the other. Plo nodded his head and asked what they were about. They're about pain, death, suffering. Do these visions revolve around yourself? or those you care about. People I care about. Anakin, you must be careful when sensing the future. Remember, the future is always in motion. I know, Master, but... There was a momentary pause from Anakin, and he sat there silently on the other side of the hologram, which for him felt like hours. Plo watched, waiting patiently, and then Skywalker said it. But last time I had these visions, someone died. One who seeks to change their fate, often wills it to happen. Remember what happened on Felucia. Close your eyes. Remember, your emotions clouded your judgment. This isn't the same. Master Plo, this isn't like Ahsoka or Obi-Wan. This is a moment in time where the uncontrollable happens. What is it that you are withholding from me? I cannot help you if you don't tell me everything. Master Plo, I feel lost. I feel lost. I feel that I can't make the right decisions and I feel like I'll lose everything I've ever cared for if I make a singular choice. I feel trapped. I see. Anakin, I want you to work on removing your emotions from what you cannot control. I will try and return to Coruscant before tomorrow. I know things can be difficult with other council members. So I'll come to you. I can help you, but I need to know. Can I trust you? Anakin nodded his head and thanked Plo, telling him that he didn't know what he would do if he hadn't spoken to anyone about his dreams. Plo just told Anakin that he was strong-willed as an individual. If he could focus on who he was and what his strengths were, then perhaps this would pass by without hurting him as it had in the past. These thoughts remained in Anakin's mind for the rest of the day. This would stick with him when he and Padme talked about if they were on the right side of the war or not. Instead of snapping at her, he spoke to her. He didn't know what to think about the concept of them having potentially joined the Separatists, but the war was nearly over. Everything they had fought for thus far would likely continue into the era after the war. Anakin was doing well and enjoying time with his wife, when he was summoned to the opera house in the upper class district of Coruscant. Anakin wasn't exactly looking forward to it, but he had to consistently remind himself that it wasn't just black and white, that what he wanted was within his grasp. The words kept playing in his mind, reminding himself that he could do it, that he wasn't spying, he was relaxing. It was refreshing to change his mindset. He could literally take the council's mission and relax for the rest of the war. Just chill with Palpatine. Of course, with Palpatine suggesting he lead a campaign on Utapau, Perhaps it wouldn't just be that easy, but in his mind, he assumed the council wouldn't select him because of the mission he was on. Using the words Plo said to him, he decided that he wouldn't get his hopes up. Not in a way to suppress his own emotions, but to validate himself and understand that what he was doing was important. He'd be doing nothing but proving to the Jedi that Palpatine was a good man, which in his own mind required him doing literally nothing different. Though one thing that did give Anakin a weird vibe was Palpatine telling the tragedy surrounding Darth Plagueis the Wise. The fact that it was a Sith legend was kind of weird. Anakin hadn't said anything to Palpatine about his wife dying in childbirth, and yet Palpatine was telling him stories about the Sith Lord, who could save people from death. Anakin's clear conscience was able to hear the story, but be cautious as to why it was being told to him or said to him. Anakin didn't believe Palpatine was a Sith Lord or anything like that, he just found it extremely peculiar. Anakin got to enjoy the rest of the Opera House show for free and then return home where he was presented with more nightmares. He also learned that Plo Koon hadn't returned yet. He was pulling a red eye because another battle started in the middle of the night on Coruscant time. In the morning, Skywalker returned to the council chambers and informed his fellow council members. Whoa, wait a sec, say that again? In the morning, he returned to the council chambers to inform his peers. The council was full of peers now. Wow, what a change of perception did for him. 
Anyways, he told the council that General Grievous was on the planet of Utapau. The council prepared to dispatch a general to fight, and Anakin looked over at Plo, his hologram at least, before expressing that the Chancellor suggested him for the mission. But before finishing the statement, Anakin expressed that he believed that at the moment he should not be dispatched, not revealing the nature of his mission, just saying that an elder, more experienced member of the council should go. Truthfully, this made Anakin's skin crawl. He hated having the buckle down and play politics, but the minds of the council were impressed. Plo Koon, in the corner of the room, nodded his head at Anakin, and Skywalker leaned back in his seat with a smile. Then he realized how comfortable the seat was. Wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah, he could play politics to have a view like this and a seat like this. That was definitely worth it. The council selected Obi-Wan to go. He'd beaten Grievous a couple of times during the war, and unlike Fisto, Kenobi had fought Grievous more than once. Windu almost chose Fisto, but Kenobi's Legion would be much better suited for an attack on Utapau. It was decided. Anakin and Obi-Wan would make their way to the docking yard, so Anakin could see Obi-Wan off before what would likely be his final encounter with a good general. Anakin and Obi-Wan had a very beautiful moment with each other, where Anakin was able to be humble and show his humility, and his former teacher congratulated him on all of his accomplishments. They then wished the Force be with each other, so they would see each other again. Anakin would continue his day going from Padme's residence and back to the Jedi Temple. Nothing major would happen and Skywalker would join Master Windu in the briefing room. As they were talking, Commander Cody showed up and informed them that General Kenobi had begun his fight with General Grievous. Windu turned and requested that Skywalker inform the Chancellor. Anakin nodded his head and left. The shock for Anakin would be learning the truth about Palpatine. As if the hints weren't obvious enough, he now knew the truth. Anakin quickly returned to the temple and informed Master Windu. Skywalker was told to wait in the council chambers. Anakin listened. But he was concerned for the lives of those who went over to the Chancellor's office to talk with him, or as Windu would say, end his party. As Anakin sat in the council chambers, he could feel something. Like, for a moment, as if Padme could use the Force. He could feel her more than ever before. Maybe the child within her was giving her a strong sense to use the Force, but for Padme, it was very unnerving. She never had such a feeling before, but she walked to the edge of her apartment and looked over towards the Jedi Temple. Anakin was looking towards her direction anyways, and his concentration was fixated on her. He then heard Palpatine's voice telling him that he could save the ones he cared about. Anakin feeling Padme at such greatness with so much energy broke him. He could feel her like he did any other Jedi and it was confusing but so warming. He knew what he had to do. Anakin turned around and started to walk towards the door when the door opened in front of him. Plo Koon walked in. He could see the tears in Anakin's eyes and asked him what was wrong. Anakin expressed that he was unsure. He just, he, he just couldn't get the answer out. He needed to go. Plo told him to stop and asked him to tell him what was going on. Anakin couldn't leave Plo in the dark. He obviously did everything in his power to get here for Anakin, so he asked if Plo wanted the full truth or the half truth. Plo just wanted whatever Anakin would give him, so Anakin squeezed out an answer. There's not really an easy way to say this. Palpatine is the Sith Lord. Mace just went over to the executive building to arrest him. I, on the other hand, am stressed out of my mind because my wife is about to die in childbirth with my child. This would explain a lot. Wait, why are you here? Master Windu told me to wait in the council chambers. You're really going to have to trust me now. We need to get over there immediately. Plo Koon put his hand on Anakin's shoulder and nodded his head, as if he were saying to Anakin that they had to do this together. This wasn't Plo doubting the effectiveness of the council. This was Plo realizing that the Chosen One was left inside the temple while the Jedi tried to bring balance to the Force. The truth is, Plo telling Anakin that he needed to trust him was Plo vocalizing his largest concerns with Anakin at the moment. Because when they got over to the executive building, he needed to trust that Anakin would be able to do what it took to bring balance to the Force. They quickly got down to the hangar bay and departed from the temple. The two of them didn't say much of a word to each other over to the executive building. As they landed, they quickly ran across the pristine floors. There was silence coming from the room. They both felt a wave of relief wash over them. The two of them walked around the corner, but Plo told Anakin that he would go in first so he could explain their arrival. Anakin nodded his head. While the silence had to be a sign that the Jedi won, there was something off. As the two of them walked into the office, they could hear the words Execute Order 66 coming from Palpatine's mouth. Plo and Anakin could see Commander Cody on the hologram, and it ended. Sidious smiled and told them that they were already too late. Plo ignited his lightsaber and Anakin mirrored him. Plo and Anakin looked at the floor to see the dead bodies of Windu, Fisto, Kolar, and Tin strewn about. Anakin told Plo that they would take him together. Plo rolled his blade around in his hand and moved into his signature pose. Skywalker did the same thing. Sidious told Skywalker that the Jedi wouldn't be able to save his wife from certain death. The moment the word death crawled out of Sidious' mouth, Anakin felt a terrible pain hit him in the chest. He could feel the death of someone so close to him. Obi-Wan wasn't on the side of the mountain when the order was executed. He was moving between lines and stuck right where Mundi, Secure, and a number of other Jedi were. Anakin felt his chest, and Plo asked if he was alright. Sidious told the Jedi that the death of his friends could have been prevented. 
the Jedi had betrayed the Republic. Obi-Wan was a traitor just as much as any of the other four were. Anakin looked up with fire in his eyes and he smiled. This is what he wanted. Plo knew that he couldn't talk Skywalker out of it even if he tried. They would have to fight Sidious with this dark aura surrounding Skywalker. Anakin launched himself at Sidious and his lightsaber ignited. Plo moved in too and another lightsaber ignited. He was prepared for this occasion. Their blades spun around and Sidious was able to break away from the two of them. He got across the room buying himself more time. Time was all he needed. Skywalker and Plo picked up their pursuit and chased him down. It was already too late. Order 66 had been executed. The Jedi were going to be killed galaxy-wide, and as they fought, both Plo and Anakin were reeling from all the darkness in the Force. They were fighting with all their strength, but as more and more Jedi died across the galaxy, cities only got stronger. Both Plo and Anakin used Form 5 and were extremely aggressive and powerful opponents, but cities just continued to grow from the death in the galaxy. Plo and Anakin pressed forward, coming into their own in the battle as it continued to intensify, before Plo Koon's dominant forearm was cut off and he was kicked back into some furniture. Anakin continued forward just as he had with Dooku. Sidious knew what Skywalker was doing and he smiled. He was giving into the darkness, he was allowing it to fuel him, and he was growing more and more powerful by using it. Sidious and Anakin were in an intense standoff until Sidious threw his blade down on Anakin's and launched his elbow into Anakin's jaw, kicking him down and putting Skywalker onto his knees in front of Palpatine. Both Crimson Blades rounded themselves around and sat at Skywalker's throat. Sidious told Skywalker that he had one more chance to join the dark side, where everything he ever cared about would be lost. Before Anakin could answer, yellow electricity covered Sidious' body and he was flung out the window, yelling as he sped into the city below, likely to his death. Plo leaned back and asked if Anakin was alright. He nodded his head and fell over, holding himself up with his hands. He pushed himself off the ground and helped Plo off the ground. Plo caught his breath for a moment. Sidious was so powerful, it took all of his strength to do what he just did to him. Luckily, it seemed as if they had just brought balance to the Force in some way. Anakin nodded his head and said that he couldn't have done it without him. Plo patted Skywalker on the shoulder and told him they needed to go. If what they were feeling was true, then perhaps what Palpatine was saying when they entered had dire effects on the Jedi Order. It was true. The Jedi Temple was smoking as Skywalker and Plo made their way back. The two of them landed on the landing bay platform outside the hangar bay and were approached by a number of clones. The temple was nowhere near being controlled or captured by the clones, but their kill counts were getting up. Syndralic and his temple guard were able to make a counter assault after Syndralic killed the Grand Inquisitor. Anakin and Plo ignited their lightsabers. Neither of them wanted to kill the clones, but they would disarm them. The clones who came up to see them were launched into the air and slammed against the massive pillars outside the bay, being knocked out. Plo told Anakin to find Syndralic, and he would try and find Shakti and the others. Anakin nodded his head, and Plo broke off from him. The fighting was intense. There was terror throughout the temple. Their friends, their allies, the clones turned on them. This was across the galaxy. Luckily for Ahsoka, it happened before they jumped to hyperspace before leaving Mandalore. Many Jedi were in lucky places, and others not. Depa Balaba was able to survive because of their conflict with the Separatist. She escaped into a tree line where she was able to find her student and whisk him away. This happened before the Bad Batch arrived and it helped both of them escape. Many other Jedi were not so lucky. Plo Koon was able to join up with Shock T inside the Jedi Temple where she and Jocasta knew were defending a group of younglings that would have been dead had Shock T not gotten there. Jocasta knew saw the younglings when the clones arrived to kill them, but she wasn't quick enough in her old age to save them. Shock T was, and a simple usage of the Force was able to keep them safe. She was able to inform Plo that Syndralic and the Temple Guards killed a traitor in their ranks and were able to make a pushback against the clones. As Anakin soon learned, despite how elite his unit was, they were no match for Syndralic's temple defense plans. He had plans that would have been effective against any military force seen in galactic history, including Mandalorians. The temple was a fortress and he proved that against the clones. He didn't want to, but he was left with no other choice. Anakin helped Syndralic force the rest of the clones from the temple. When the battle was over, Anakin realized that he hadn't contacted Padme, so he reached out to her. Order 66 claimed thousands of lives in such a short period of time, though if it wasn't for Syndralic, then the day would have been lost at the Jedi Temple. Ahsoka was able to escape back to Mandalore without all of her men dying, though Darth Maul did not share a similar fate. With most of those dead on the High Council, aside from Yoda, Shakti, Plo Koon, Depa Balaba, and Anakin Skywalker, they'd have to restructure what was lost. But Anakin came running to Plo Koon, expressing that there was an issue. Plo asked what it was, and then Anakin told him the little thing he mentioned earlier. That person, she wasn't responding to him. Plo requested that Syndralic and Shakti continue to make sure the temple was secured. If there was a sign of anything larger than an LAAT, evacuate. Luckily, with cities dead, there was no one to order the destruction of the Jedi Temple. Plo and Anakin made their way across the city to Padme's residence. On their way over to the residence, Anakin told Plo that he was sorry for involving him in such a lie, and Plo told Anakin that he shouldn't apologize. What happened was done. There was no reason to fret about it having happened. Truthfully, he felt a sense of honor that he was included in the people that Skywalker trusted. 
Anakin didn't trust just anyone after all. As they entered the residence, it was silent. Plo ignited his lightsaber and Anakin looked back. As Skywalker turned to look at Plo, he saw a shadow dart across the hallway. Anakin called out demanding to know who was there and ignited his own lightsaber. Plo turned around. They could hear laughing echoing out of the rooms. They each looked to each other and crept forward. Each step felt louder than the one that preceded it, and then they heard a cry out of Anakin's name. Padme. Anakin ran forward. If Plo had another arm, he would grab Anakin, but he couldn't. Plo told Anakin to stop, but he didn't, rushing into the room. Sidious was standing over Padme with his lightsaber ignited. They both stopped and looked at Sidious, demanding to know how he survived. Sidious simply smiled and told Anakin that the Sith could cheat death. The tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise was a lesson about the failure of the Jedi. Sidious let the word fire crawl out of his mouth, and as it did, Anakin and Plo watched the Jedi Temple become engulfed in flames as a Venator opened fire on it, obliterating the entire facility. The smoke rose from the ground and the two Jedi looked on in horror. Sidious told Skywalker that now he had to make a choice, surrender himself over to the dark side or lose everything else. Plo looked at Anakin. If there was any moment to trust each other, it was right now. Plo could see something Anakin couldn't, and when it became clear that Anakin wouldn't stand down, Sidious ignited the lightsaber that was sitting at Padme's back, the one that wasn't ignited. But the weapon didn't turn on. Instead, Plo was holding it closed with the force. Sidious looked down and realized what Plo was doing. Sidious yelled out. Plo told Skywalker to pull Padme into the other room. Sidious shot lightning at Plo to get him to stop as he tried to fling the weapon away from his hand, but he couldn't. The lightning began to scorch Plo's body as he held the blade in one piece as Padme and Anakin evacuated the room. When it was clear, Plo released his grip on the weapon and exploded, ripping the entire room into pieces, incinerating Sidious and throwing Plo through the wall behind him. Anakin ducked down from the explosion with Padme and then asked if she was alright, which she was, before turning back and running over to find Plo. He shuffled through the debris, lifting pieces of the wall off of Plo's body. He looked over and he was breathing very weakly. Anakin got down under him and put his back on Anakin's lap, asking if he was alright. Plo nodded his head, but telling Anakin that he had become one with the Force soon. Anakin shook his head. He told Plo that he could not go, and Plo took his hand and nodded his head. It was time. He had one last message for Anakin. One to reassure him that if he ever needed guidance, he'd be ready for him. If you ever feel lost, look to the Force. If you struggle to do that, look to the stars and think of one of them as my soul. Anakin tried to call Plo's name out, but his body weight became heavy, and Anakin felt his body go cold in the Force. Anakin's head sunk, and as it got lower, so did his heart. He lost too many mentors in one day. Anakin slowly turned to Padme and hugged her. He told her that he was sorry for the trauma she went through. She just told him it was okay. Everything would be okay. Maybe not today, or tomorrow, but someday it would be. The trauma of Order 66 and the death of the Jedi had Anakin and Padme ditching Coruscant for Naboo. The stress of the events that played out were bad enough to force Padme into labor upon their arrival at the planet. Luckily for them, they didn't need to be a part of anything that would transpire afterwards. With the destruction of the Jedi and the end of the Clone Wars, the Republic needed reshaping. This is where Interim Chancellor Bail Organa would come in at. He would inspire the hearts of a broken galaxy to move past what had happened. As many people realized, Palpatine happened to be terrible for the Republic and for the galaxy. Many people began to see him as a madman. As many clone testimonials would point to him being the one behind the activation of the inhibitor chips. The investigation would have to poke a city torn down for attempting a coup on the Galactic Republic. The peace would be sworn in for the people of the Republic as well. The Jedi would be greatly lost. What was an order of 10,000 was now an order of less than 50. The destruction of the temple killed so many Jedi. The battle in the temple went so well for the order that they would have had an additional 3,500 Jedi. Now their numbers were dwindling. Yoda would have to find as many Jedi as he could and try and save them. He would learn that the Sith were dead thanks to intel from Skywalker and Tano both reporting that either Sidious or Maul had died or been killed. Though, for Yoda, he learned that neither of them would be joining his order, and this did leave him kind of hopeless. At the very least, he still had Master Depa Balaba and the other Jedi that he would spend time tracking down. When all was said and done, the total count for Jedi found would be 34, and they would relocate to a planet with an old Jedi outpost on it, so they could rebuild with some semblance of structure. Names that were able to find their way home included Cal Kestis without his master, Caleb Doom with his master, and General Balin Skull. The Order may have been mostly destroyed, but there was a chance for rebirth. Anakin would have a lot of struggles in the aftermath of it all. Having lost his master, his friends, and Plo Koon, he was struggling a lot. Of course, he was happy Padme lived, but everything else was terrible. He should have trusted the Council on their assessment of the Chancellor. He was a terrible man, and many nights, Anakin would lay awake, doing as Plo suggested, looking into the Force, which didn't work. He wasn't just looking for Plo Koon, but for Obi-Wan as well. When Anakin, after about a week of slugging around, unable to sleep, 
gave up looking through the forest. He tried the other method. He went out to the fields of Naboo while his family was sleeping and knelt down. He looked up into the sky at night and he found a couple of stars, ones that could represent Obi-Wan and Plo in his mind. As he looked to them, he spoke to them and felt the Force fulfill him. His first attempt had him connecting himself to the cosmic force where every Jedi remained. Not a single one of them was missing from this realm, and they would communicate with Skywalker if they wanted, but they didn't. They just made their presence felt. He brought balance of the Force. This little effort of making their presence felt was all Anakin ever needed. He felt like he didn't let everyone down when he felt this, and he could begin his own journey on healing. Ahsoka and Rex would pop on and off world in the coming weeks and months, just to say hello and stay for a while before continuing their own journeys and adventures. Anakin eventually was able to get over the trauma he incurred through the events of Order 66. The memories never left him, but once he got over the trauma, he could properly be a part of his family. He and Padme wouldn't have any other children, but they would continue to grow in their relationship with each other and help their children where they needed it. Both Luke and Leia followed in their mother's footsteps, though when they were 18, they both wanted to meet Yoda and the Order. It was an interesting experience to say the least, but it was full of kindness and love. Since the fall of the Order, Yoda was opening the Order up to others, and with Depa Balaba slotted to become the next Grand Master after his death, she was in agreement with it. This turned both Luke and Leia into Jedi, while also continuing their own political careers. While they didn't openly say to anyone that they were Jedi, they were allowed to be Jedi, carry lightsabers, and learn from Jedi texts. This openness made Anakin and Ahsoka rejoin the Jedi Order, but they never visited the new Jedi homeworld aside from seeing Luke and Leia whenever they were there, or visiting Yoda before and after his passing. The galaxy may have changed greatly, but with a few brave souls it was able to be saved from the oppression of the Sith forever. And that, my friends, is our story. Again, special thanks to Galvin Gaming, Tristan, Darth Revan, Pimp Daddy Bane, The Last Jedi, Apollo, Wee Woo 670, Ozzy Tano, Rai Rai 700, Darth Nox, The Eternal Padawan, Johnny Naguin, Sansa Skeleton, Jedi Sloth, Mr. Yeet Gamer, Lord Kali, Youngling Slayer 66, Mad Maddie Studios, Anakin 003, Fordo's Legacy, Star Wars, Lemon Knight, Rex the Wolf, The Man with Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Lord Deadwing for supporting that channel. Smash that like button if you want to support me in other ways. Go check out the Patreon, The Sith Clone Wars is being updated. If I don't make another 55 minute video in the next 3 days, which has already happened, I might be able to do some more updates on that. Anyways, let's talk about the video. So uh, I wanted to do something different, I say this all the time, and it might get repetitive, but that's the truth. And so I know we kind of collectively agree that Mace Windu won the fight against Palpatine, but why not take advantage of that? I wanted to flip that around, and so we did. And like, it was kind of cool having Plo and Anakin go toe to toe with Sidious. I think Sidious would probably beat both of them. Uh, I really do like Plo Koon, but I just, I think Sidious would beat him. And I think at that point he was kind of toiling around with him, he's playing with him, he's trying to get Anakin to turn to the dark side to just neglect the Jedi. And when that doesn't happen, he just kind of becomes frustrated. And so I really wanted the twist to be in it. I like, I really like, I don't know, it's kind of a dark side, but a happy ending in a way. Like, like the hypocrisy of the Jedi kind of dies with them, but like, that's kind of like the tragedy of it. They all die, but like their hypocrisy dies with them. And they kind of get the rebirth while Anakin gets it. It's just, you know, I hope you all enjoyed it. Anyways, I love you all. Spread the love and always remember my friends. May the force be with you.